Hello pals out there, welcome to Robert at Home. Now some of you may know that my wife likes to embarrass me and one of the forms that this takes is that my wife lets me go out in public in such a way that I look really, really stupid. Even better, that I might look really, really stupid because I am utterly dominated by my sweet-lipped wife. And a simple example of this. My wife thought this would escape me. Do you see on my forehead two imprints of the lips of Sweet Lips Wilcox? Now, my wife gave me an innocent kiss at lunch, or so I thought. I did not realise the intent behind my wife's kissing, knowing that I had some shopping to do. In the past, I have gone out and wandered around town and returned only to find that I have imprints of the Wilcox upon different, perhaps a cheek or two, and my forehead or three, whatever. On this occasion, I have caught this in time and I am showing it to you just to let you know what life is like here. So on YouTube, Robert at Home 5, Mr. B Bite Goatee, Mr. Bite Goatee generously comments, a locking nut is no guarantee against going out of tune. I agree completely. They will do so regularly. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, there are various comments about locking nut mechanisms. Well, on this guitar, which is my first ever Crimson Guitars from Ben Crow, my first model, there are locking nuts. I have these on several instruments. They don't convince me, I must say. So here is one form of a locking nut here. But my preference is for tuning with these. This is how I tune. I have a tremolo arm primarily to follow the tuning of the other guitarist that I'm playing with. Is the other guitarist is a little flat to me, little push down, a little sharp, little push up, and there is a settle, settlement very, very small, but enables me to come closer. So for this, I would like, please, my locking nut so it's pretty stable here and I can tune when I need to down here on the tremolo arm. Tuning, pff, there is no end to it. How do we tune? Essentially by our ear, yes, also in the body, but there is a sense of this feels right. It may or may not be right on our tune there. But if it feels right, if it sounds right, I'm prepared to say, yeah, it's close enough for rock and roll. My brother Richard Pinhas of Heldon 
has suggested I might present a few examples of how to engage with fracture. <sighs> this is a world of pain awaiting us all. So, a few preparatory words. Firstly, do we have an efficient, reliable left hand? Well, the answer is it's possible. Do we have an efficient, reliable right hand? The answer is wildly unlikely. Thirdly, the third factor is the coordination between the two. Whoa. That said, assuming all of these are in place, then we move to the different forms of fracture. The first is the original fracture written in 1973 in e-tuning. Then you have the second rearranged version about 2016 for the final incarnation of King Crimson, written or rather arranged in C tuning. The third version of this is where we play the original fracture in E tuning, but we're playing in C tuning. And there is the fourth, which is a series of varieties and accommodations between the two tunings. Whoa. Now, while we're here, the nerdy nerds among you might like to see this is the original Les Paul, 1959 Les Paul, upon which Fracture was written. It was written in the kitchen of Thornhill Cottage in Holt, my first cottage, just two and a half miles from Wimborne and where my parents lived. So this is that guitar. All right, fear. So how to begin? Well, let's begin with the left hand. In guitar craft, we begin the approach to the left hand with what is known the first primary, which this is a simple form of it. The principle is no fingers are released in an ascending mode until the final finger in the ascending sequence has been fretted. So, no movement until the little finger is in place and then moving to the third string, little finger in place, returning. There is a 
sense within the hand of the completion of the flow of the fingers. It's very dangerous to present what one shouldn't do, but this is what usually happens. Now having looked at nearly 4,000 left hands over a period of 36 years, this is what happens. Forget you've seen that. Now look at this. Now that should be simple. To familiarize the fingers with this motion, perhaps this. So we become familiar with the sequence completing before there is any movement. Then we remove the open notes. But a beautiful autumn. I love the way these wall mirrors, these garden mirrors, banks light around here in the fountain area. Last Thursday evening, Toy had an email from a local pal who said, we've just watched you on Channel 5 on Pam Ears, The Cotswolds and Beyond. So T immediately pulled up Channel 5 plus 1 and there we were, the last 10 minutes of the programme, Toy with Pam Ears in our garden and on a boat going down the Avon towards Wire Mill, where Toya's father had a boat for many years. And in fact, he would get on his boat at Wire Piddle and come on down to the end of our garden here. There we are. So a little less sunny, but wow, wow. And over here, on the other side of the wall are vegetables. So my first personal one-on-one -on -one guitar student since the beginning of 1975 asked me to show them a middle section in Fracture so that they have something to practice while I'm speaking with David Singleton in America for a month. Well, looking at what is a doable and still moderately challenging tempo, 110 BPM, I presented them with a few parts they might like to address. So this is a version we've been learning. We've probably been...
battery died.